Hi guys, welcome back to Seduce Me. Okay. Just got left. I'm gonna go sleep to death. <laughs> or not. Freaking Diana. Go away. I suddenly tensed up. I felt majorly uneasy. Something wasn't right. I felt it in my core. She must be here. The thought of her in the house infuriated me behind, beyond belief. I had to make sure she was not here. I rolled out of bed and quickly left my room, wandering the halls and listening closely. She was a demon, but I was listening very intently. There was no way she would be able to sneak up on me. I know you're here. Where are you? I could feel myself growl. It wasn't a matter of fear that she'd take away the boys anymore. Her very existence had lit a fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. This feud was getting on my nerves, and I knew it would not end well for one of us. I wasn't going to lose that to that demon bitch. Diana? Hmm? What are you doing here? My heart stopped. Diana was with James. My mind flew into slow motion, playing fake images of Diana trying to seduce James in my head to further fan the angry flame inside of me. Man, she's getting mad. I instinctively followed James's voice and approached the study. The door was open, just a clack, crack wide enough to peek in without being noticed. I peeked inside to see James by the bookshelf, with Dan on one of the armchairs looking at him. Silly man, why do you think I'm here? To be fairly honest, I don't really care. I'm hurt, wounded, truly. You don't care that I came to this pathetic little world just for you? I'm sorry, let me make this clear. You are not welcome here, so I suggest leaving. Is that any way to speak to your fiancé? Santa wasn't his fiancé anymore. What was she speaking of if the arrangement was still going on? Our arrangement was broken when I left the Abyssal Plains. You are no longer my fiancé. What a stubborn man. Just like your father. Well, you should know. He decreed that should you return home, you'll maintain your status and keep your birthright. But what about his brothers? James would be their heir again? Why? I don't want it. You don't want it? You'd give up the... I said I don't want my damned birthright! What birthright?! It's imprisonment! A life sentence! Am I not allowed to be selfish for once in my lifetime?! What? Oh my gosh, it's the most... I've seen him get angry before. It's awesome! It's your reason for your birth. Do you not realize what you have? I could feel James's anger emanating from the crack in the door, fighting Diana's attention. Diana and James were both matched, staring at each other down. I know exactly what I had. That's all behind me. I'm done with that. To hell with my birthright. To hell with your birthright. You truly think you can decide that? You are the first son of the Demon Lord. You are the heir to the throne, and I am your bride, the next Demon Queen. Why was Diana so desperate? It irked me to see how desperate she was to get James to return. Raystrow, you... Oh... All of a sudden, James ran at Diana and pinned her to the floor by the neck. I felt the need to jump in, but I knew James wasn't trying to do anything romantic. He wouldn't. His voice sent shivers down my spine as I continued to speak with his hands by her throat. And what gives you the right to use my name like that? Only demons of the same blood are permitted to use each other's true names. Yeah, I'm special. When our families arranged our marriage, I was given permission to use your name as mine. That's what you are, James. You are my husband. I am your queen. You are my Reistrel. I am your Izeur. I could hear James growling in anger, like he was ready to bite Diana's head off, like a wolf would the small deer. I felt myself growl quietly to myself as well. However, James pushed himself off the floor and returned to the opposite side of the room, away from the lane. I do not belong to you. I belong to her. 
The human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position, but it was growing extremely tired of Diana. Set her straight. I decided to be assertive and quickly stepped into the room, opening the door to study, to study wide open. Diana and James looked at me in surprise as I glared daggers at Diana. Get out. Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. It does concern me. Does it? I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. You're asking to leave to be someone... You're asking to leave with someone he doesn't want to be with. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? I love him. Diana stared in shock to my exclamation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care what she expected. I was going to lose to the man I had grown to love. You love him? Yes, I love him. Diana's lips twitched the edge curling to an amused smirk as he stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. To both our surprise, however, James stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her. Ha. Huh. I saw the confidence Diana had, sh had shatter in her eyes as she stared at James at his words. I could see the struggle in her face to try and find some weakness in James. In me. Anything. A demon love a human? Impossible. It's only impossible because you don't have the capability to love. This woman has given so much to shelter me and my brothers and has given me her heart to cherish. I'd rather care for this woman for the rest of my days than spend an eternity on the demon throne. Especially if the queen is you. Diana took a step back, physically feeling the sting of James's words in her chest. She had lost. I could see it in her eyes. Diana's eyes grew dull as she glared at me and James. It seemed almost uncharacteristic of her, yet it was something I wasn't surprised to see come from her face. Very well. Fine. Valet. And with that, Diana faded into the ground into a purple pentagram, crossing her arms and almost looking upset. James and I were then left alone, left with the silence of the room. I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. James stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. Are you okay? I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. James let out a sigh, relaxing into the embrace. I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I could hear James' heartbeat. He held me close in his arms, and I felt safe beyond words. I wasn't lying, you know. I looked up at James, wondering what he meant by that. James smiled down at me, moving a strand of my hair from my face and to look down at me. I love you. I love every single fiber of you. Your mind, your body, your soul. You're quite possibly the most interesting woman I have ever met. You always find your way into my mind. You... I stared wide-eyed, blushing like a maniac. Was this real? No way. This couldn't be real. Was James confessing to me? Confessing his love to for me? James gently smiled and caressed my cheek. The warmth of his hand invited me to nestle into him, and I closed my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding to the point where I was sure James could hear it. James gently leaned in closing his eyes. He stopped, however, remaining just a mere torturous inch away from my lips. He wanted me to show my feelings for him. He had left himself open for me to kiss him or leave him empty. The power I had was unbelievable. I loved him and wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly. James let out an almost pleasured purr against my lips before wrapping both of his arms around my waist pulling me close to him. I moved my arms up and around his neck, feeling the kiss between his teeth into a heated height. My chest was pounding, making me feel it and see fireworks in my mind. James was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. 
It was all so supernatural to fall in love with someone so quickly. Maybe it was the sense of magic I was thrown into. Maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. I found myself combing my fingers through James's hair, missing the man holding me softly tremble at my touch. He gently nibbled on my lower lip, asking me to dip in the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before finally opening my mouth slightly for him. His tongue gently danced with mine as one of his hands slipped up my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as he, the heat of our kiss rose higher and higher. Gently, though, James slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me. His eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself melt already. James opened his mouth to speak, but a very small blush ran along his cheeks. He was reduced to shy silence. I stared as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes. I knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... I stared wide-eyed, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say anything more, but I knew that the words would follow if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was I that appealing to him? Was his passion really that deep for me? James gently lifted his head and kissed my forehead, losing the blush and finally being able to speak. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I could feel my body go numb and purr at the idea. A moment with an incubus, he was a demon of sex, the purest form of lust and desire. My world would rock and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed to me to be innocent. Did I want to give the innocence to him, especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What, would ha what could I say to him? I knew then what I wanted, but how to say it without breaking the moment. As I said before, I'm going to uh, skip over that scene and save it for another video, video where it's just a compilation of uh, the alternate... Um, to seduce, like, al alternate to what I choose. That way, may or might not restrict, restrict it, depending on, eh, I I'll think about it. But yeah. So, not taking that route now. Just, just taking the fluffy route. <laughs> I wasn't ready, but I still wanted to give him the love he wanted. Holding him close was all I needed, all I wanted. Part of me grew fearful, fearful of what James would think. Would he hate me? Would he regret giving me his love? So many stories ended when sex wasn't given, and I didn't want the story to end. James, however, smiled and caressed my cheek happily in response, nodding in understanding. I could tell that he was okay with my decision, which made my heart flutter in joy. James gently leaned in and kissed my lips once again, wanting both of us to cool down from our passionate high. I kissed back sweetly, feeling the heat in my chest die out peacefully. James pulled away slowly, looking into my eyes to reveal deep love that haunted his old irises. Come, you need to rest still. Jameson wrapped an arm around my shoulders and lowered his other arm underneath my knees. I could e I easily held on to him as he lifted me up like a blushing bride and carried me out, to, out of the room towards my room. James was kind enough to know my limits, and I trusted him to respect my choice. He wouldn't enthrall me to go against my wishes, nor would he force himself on me. He was perfect. James gently lowered me to my bed before petting my head with a loving smile. I was beaming in happiness. I didn't want it to end. As James kissed my forehead and turned to leave, I quickly grabbed his arm. Wait! James froze and looked back at me, awaiting my next command. He was going to obey no matter what I said, but he was anticipating what I was going to ask. I could see it in his eyes. However, I just wanted him to be with me a little longer. I didn't want to rest alone. Hold me. I repeated my words, holding him with my meaning to those two words. Was he okay with what I wanted? It was so close to what he had asked for, but it wasn't going beyond what I desired. James took in my words and smiled, nodding before returning back to me and sliding into bed with me. I was surprised, but I was happy. But I happily melted into James's arms as he wrapped himself around my body. I rested my head against James's chest, enjoying the warmth it provided as I closed my eyes. 
He truly loved me as I loved him. My rest with him was as peaceful as it could be, the best sleep I had in years. When I opened my eyes, I felt James still holding me, but he had fallen asleep. His sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and as our heated dance were played in my head, I couldn't help but smell and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened up and made me sit up without wanting, waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to my balcony window, where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. Ah, oh, Diana, what do you want now? I stared wide at Diana, who was who sat cross-legged on the railing of my balcony with her glowing red-eyed stare upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. I will admit, though, I'm shocked that you didn't give your innocence to him. We demons are the best lovers, you know. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel, you know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours, and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? It was beyond crazy. Nothing she had done made me s made sense. Why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping you from just killing me and taking them? <laughs> you are not worth my time. Not worth your time? What are you, afraid something might happen? All at once, I felt my body being lifted into the air and moved over the past the railings, leaving me with nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning, when the boys would find you. I wanted to speak, but the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence. Diana then chuckled and wheeled my body back to the balcony, setting me down gently. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back, but then their father wouldn't be happy and blah blah blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business-oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she then smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed, and let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power. Men. Women. Money. Fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. Yeah, but you'd find a way to twist it, so no. Um, yeah. I could only stare in shock. This was just a dream. This, this was a dream. It had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking me from the reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. How did you... I was almost floored in surprise. How did Diana know all of this? She was a succubus, yes, but how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't Damien. Diana chuckled and leaned back against her arms. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Was I seriously being given the choice? The man I loved for anything I wanted? A demon like Diana was powerful enough, yes. 
Or did I even want to consider giving up the man I loved? No. She must have been crazier than I thought. I glared. Absolutely not. Diana sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I wasn't expecting was her lifting me into the air as I tried to scream. I mean, I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became locked in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me floor float over to her and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. I shut my eyes, feeling the need to bite her lips, but finding no muscles in my face listening to my mental commands. What did she do to me? I didn't want to enjoy it, but every single nerve in my body was flaring in excitement and pleasure as she kissed me. I felt my energy drain slowly but forcefully from my body. Was she, was she using her magic to force energy out of my body? It seemed like forever, but finally Diana pulled away from the kiss with a smile and a lick of her lips. She lowered me back onto the patio with, and chuckled. For some reason, even though nothing seemed to have changed, she looked stronger, powerful. It was almost like looking at a new Diana. Diana then stepped back off the railing, making me catch my breath. As she took another step away from me, she looked to be simply walking in the night air. Diana smirked at my sudden surprise. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness of the shadow. I watched her fade away before looking back at the man on my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer. I did, and I will never regret it for as long as I live. I walked back inside and gently crawled back into the bed, within the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. The rest of the story almost can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal with school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if magic never even appeared in my world. One thing was for certain, however. James loved me, and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other, and nothing was going to take that away from us, not even time itself. Our love was so powerful it practically overwhelmed me in the joy every time I found him holding me close every morning. To think, a demon ex-prince in love with a human like me. It was unthinkable, unbelievable. It was practically impossible. But it was true. To the other boys, the other boys decided to leave on their own accord. They knew that my future was, would only need James at my side. So they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. James was heartbroken at first, but understood that he had, let, he had to let his brothers grow like he did. Besides, James had something new to care for now. His brothers didn't need him now that he was caring for me. That sounds kind of selfish. I felt bad as well for being closer to James than the others, but they reassured me that I was okay... It was, I was okay, and that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. They made me promise, however, that if I would love James for as long as we lived, that promise was instantly given. What of my future? Well, it was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company, and... With the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father, as well as letting as well into letting him run for the CEO. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all of that was beyond me, but when the vote was called, James had taken over the company and I was destined to have, that I was destined to have. He vowed to keep the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company for a demon. It was a simple ma make, it was a simple, it was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see James help how James helped it shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help James build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? James reassured me that he would support me and help me for whatever I decided to do, promising that it came first before the company had to come. He had come to reign over, 
I was grateful and would never forget that promise. Kind of feels like, even though James says he's the next prince, technically he's now a prince, it's sort of, like, boss of a whole company, which is kind of like a whole kingdom. So, didn't really stray too far from his original thing, but hey, it's fine. As long as it gets me from working at the company. Although, I don't know. Working at a toy, toy company doesn't sound like a bad place to work. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. Let me see how many minutes I have. Um, we'll conclude, um, in the next episode. Uh, I don't want to make it over 30 minutes because, anyways. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!